Merry Christmas. Uh, bottom line up front. Hope y'all are having a safe and effective Christmas. Uh, unlike the uh, things that we've been told were safe and effective this year. Um, <laughs> but basically, uh, I thought I would uh, elaborate on something uh, that's been sort of on my mind for a while. Uh, every Christmas, I have this tradition of listening front to back to an album called A Twisted Christmas by Twisted Sister. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm one of them long-haired metalheads. Um, and I started to grow my long hair out because of Motley Crue and because of a bunch of bands like Motley Crue. And among those bands was Twisted Sister. Now, I wasn't alive in the 80s, even though I often get accused of it because, <laughs> I mean, look at me, come on. This this guy could have been alive in the 80s and he would have fit right in. Um, but I was not alive in the 80s. And ultimately, uh, there's a significant amount of stuff that I sort of missed out on, culturally speaking, until later. Um, and one of the things was the original sort of satanic panic and the moral, uh, like, consternation of, like, the media, parents, uh, churches, the literal fucking government at large. And one of the elements of that was Tipper Gore, Al Gore's bitch, and she decided, in her holy wisdom, uh, along with other people involved in um, <laughs> something called the... And for those of you who are younger, uh, I'm not making this up. The Parents Music Resource Center. They created a whole-ass group of parents um, who were angry about the content of music. And trying to get that music regulated by the government. Um, and the literal wife of Man Bear Pig Al Gore. Fucking, you know, climate change fucking hanging Chad Al Gore. That Al Gore. Um, that wife tried to get a bunch of music either banned or at least labeled. So that parents could say, I, I, I see the scary label. I'm not sure I want my kid to have that. Instead of like having an active role in their child's life and just knowing what their fucking kid listens to. Um, so they could just be lazy and see the sticker and say, no, it's not going to be acceptable. It has this scary black and white symbol and no. Um... And so, uh, that's the reason you have the Parental Advisory Explicit Content sticker on a shit ton of music now. Um, now, this, this literally led to uh, a hearing from the U.S. government. And so, they spoke to the Senate and literally tried to get this sort of thing regulated, and there was a full-on, like, hearing with supporting and opposing witnesses. Now, the opposing witnesses were obviously musicians, um, and there were a wide variety of them who said that, hey, maybe we shouldn't be entrusting the government with the regulation of fucking art. Um... One of them was obviously Frank Zappa, because his stuff had been scrutinized. Uh, he said that the PMRC is, proposal is an ill-conceived piece of nonsense, which fails to deliver any real benefits to children, infringes on the civil liberties of people who are not children, and promises to keep the courts busy for years, dealing with the interpretational and forcemental problems inherent in the proposal's design. So... Um, he, he said the major record labels need to have H.R. 2911 whiz through a few committees before any, anybody smells a rat. One of them is chaired by Senator Thurmond. 
Is it a coincidence that Miss Thurmond is affiliated with the PMRC? <laughs> Zappa had earlier stated about the, uh, the, I'm reading Wikipedia right now, about the Senate's agreement to hold the hearing on the matter, a couple of blowjobs here and there, and bingo, you got a hearing. God, he's, he's fucking great. Zappa is great, and, and he's also one of the reasons that I got, like, one of my all-time favorite entertainers, uh, Alice Cooper, because he is the one, his record label is the one that gave Alice Cooper a shot. So, you know, props to him, right? Um, but, like, John Denver even had to show up. Because the fucking, like, Karens in this PMRC, literally said that Rocky Mountain High was about drugs and not getting out in nature because they're pieces of shit. He said that the PMRC was like Nazi book burning and that this was censorship and counterproductive. Quote, that which is denied becomes that which is most desired and that which is hidden becomes that which is most interesting. Consequently, a great deal of time and energy is spent trying to get at what's being kept from you. End quote. <laughs> when Denver came up to give his speech, many expected him to side with the PMRC. Why? Because he's fucking... His stuff is banal. It's about getting out in nature. It's about, you know, being the most fulfilled version of you. John Denver is excellent. And when people, um, you know, thought of him, they thought, oh, this guy's definitely going to be a teetotaling hippie about it. Nope. Because he, he was against the man, man. Um, but, like, one example uh, was considered notable, not only because of the appearance of the uh, defendant, I guess you could say, since music was on trial, but the, uh, the, the manner in which he spoke was much more eloquent than these people were expecting. And that is D. Snyder. And I'm going to pull up this part of the Wikipedia article right here. Because this is an important part of this. Uh, D. Snyder, frontman and s lead singer of the heavy metal band Twisted Sister, testified that he did not support RIAA president... Uh, Gordikov's unnecessary and unfortunate decision to agree to a so-called generic label on some selected records. Like John Denver, Snyder felt that his music had been misinterpreted. He defended the Twisted Sister songs Under the Blade, which had been interpreted by the PMRC as referring to sadomasochism, bondage, and rape, and We're Not Gonna Take It, which the PMRC accused of promoting violence. A song about your right to choose how you live your life is promoting violence, guys. And, and his song, Under the Blade, as this uh, passage goes on to uh, elucidate, is about fucking surgery. It's about going under the blade. Um, and the only sadomasochism bondage and rape in this song is in the mind of mrs core <laughs> it's an excellent line it really is uh he further said miss gore was looking for sadomasochism and bondage and she found it someone looking for surgical references would have found it as well snyder concluded that the full responsibility for defending my children falls on the shoulders of my wife and i because there is no one else capable of making these judgments for us. So, if you scroll up, you can see the filthy 15 that these fucking Karens wanted to regulate off. Now, admittedly, I abjectly hate one of the things that they hated, which was hot for teacher. But that's not even in the fifth, filthy 15, is it? <laughs> that should have been there. So should, she's only 17, you know, like, but you know, the, these people have a very specific kind of thing with which they flex their moral consternation, to put it mildly. 
So all these songs, they, they used as examples of why the music industry was so filthy and degenerate and needed to be fucking controlled. Look at this fucking woman here. Look at how thoughtful she looks while she's deciding what you should be able to listen to. This is the face of a cunt. So with all that being said, um, the ultimate thing I wanted to talk about here for just a moment was the fact that I heard about this like a decade ago when I was really, really starting to get into metal. Um, and I still am. In fact, probably deeper into metal now than I've ever been before because I've had a chance to listen to a shit ton more of it. Um, just now I was listening to a great YouTube channel called Killian uh, who does like a ton of like uploads. Well, did. I'm not sure if he is still doing it anymore, but a ton of uploads of like obscure stuff. His, his channel's been very helpful uh, to me on my journey to being a much more uh, culturally refined metalhead. Um, and I was just listening to Dissension by Slab uh, on that channel. It's a great channel to listen to if you need music um, that's grinding or just obscure dub or something that wouldn't be on other channels, to put it mildly. Um, and it's helped me open my eyes quite a bit. But like, when I was starting out, I didn't even know who most of these bands I know now are, right? But I thought it was awesome, absolutely awesome, that D. Snyder comes in with his tattered jeans and his unkempt hair and just gave a fucking presentation to the Senate. I wasn't even an anarchist when I found out about this, and I thought that the fact that he put in a really, really, really good presentation was great. Now, though, I don't know. And I'm not taking away from what he did. He did what he had to do. And it still didn't really work. Like, they still put a label on the music, right? People still saw that label, and it was a big old fucking scary warning sign saying, Oh no, don't listen to this. You might... You might hear something we didn't want you to. Um, so, he did what he had to do. And I'm not saying this as a way to say that I'm better than him or whatever. This is just an analysis of a concept that's been bugging me. Which is that this sort of thing should never be necessary and these people shouldn't be entertained. This chick and her soccer mom associates who had an elevated opinion of themselves and their moral authority decided to try to pass laws against certain artistic expression. This chick is everything wrong with American politics wrapped into one package. Did she need to research what she was talking about? Did she need to look into any of it to realize that maybe her approach here was counterproductive, was something that was going to result in a massive amount of uh, backlash was going to create the environment where people would want the stuff she was trying to censor. No, she didn't care about that. What she cared about was control. What she cared about was pushing through her ham-fisted moral vision. That's what she cared about. And she didn't look into what the song was about. She didn't contact any of these musicians to figure out if she was even right. To figure out that maybe John Denver was talking about how pretty nature is and how good it is to get away from the civilization that bitches like this are building. Um, to figure out that maybe Frank Zappa uh, isn't always about some sort of terrible thing and is oftentimes about, like, exploration of more taboo subjects for the purposes of sociological analysis. Like, Frank Zappa's music is hugely complicated if you listen to a lot of it. And I like it for that reason, because it's music that makes you think if you let it. But she didn't like people thinking. 
And she didn't call Dee Snyder to figure out that Under the Blade was about going under the blade. And that means that she is materially irrelevant to any discussion about these things except the fact that she had governmental power and she could wield that governmental power to try and control people. To shove her cunt in a situation and say, this is how it needs to be. Anyone who doesn't like it can go to jail. Effectively. Because that's the ultimate thing that all state power boils down to is state force forcing people into a cage beating people shooting people if they don't do what the state says that's what the state is the fundamental unit of statism is violence so she was saying that these people were saying things and they needed a spanking for it That's evil. Tipper Gore was evil. And so was the PMRC. And it didn't make these musicians shiny. But you know what Dee Snyder had to do? He had to come in with his hair pinned back. He had to come in and say, I disagree with what you're saying and here's why. And I'm a Christian, and maybe the, uh, the, 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 the real decision-making power should be in the hands of the parents, you know, the, 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 the people around the kid, or the kid themselves. Wow, letting kids make their own choices. You know, he had to say, he had to make this really strong moral case for this, because he was talking to people who were trying to imply that him and his band saying things that they didn't like, using imagery that they didn't like, was immoral and requisite of government force. I say that the more that shocks these people, the better. I say that if these people want to try to control people with state violence, that nobody should have to explain shit to them. Nobody should have to tell them, hey, I'm a good Christian boy. I do all my chores. I pay all my taxes. I'm good for society, see? Now, Massa, please let me, won't you let me release my record? Fuck that. And fuck everyone involved in the initiation of those proceedings, in the drafting of those bills, in the pushing forward of legislation designed to control speech and by extension the population. Those people don't deserve an explanation because they're not willing to seek it before going to fucking government. She didn't ask Dee Snyder what the song Under the Blade was about. She assumed it was about S&M. She didn't ask most of these people. She didn't do any inquiry because when you're a hammer, every problem is a nail. And this sort of Artistic fascism, this sort of controlling mechanism, this sort of like, I'm Tipper Gore, so I'm in the government, so I don't have to ask questions and I can just do it. Mentality has gotten so much worse over the decades. And that's why still, every single time there's a shooting or some mass violence, they always blame the media. They always blame... Uh, music, art, video games, movies, TV shows. Oh no, they watched The Walking Dead. News at 8 about The Walking Dead's connection to shut the fuck up. These people created this violent culture 
by using violence as their prime and default solution to problems. They won't even properly fucking research. And they don't need to. Art shouldn't have to be hyper-Christian in order to, like, pass the state test of not needing a censorship sticker. If your god is so weak that he can't survive somebody's album, then it's not omnipotence on the table here. And you're insulting your god by insisting otherwise. If, if people can't withstand artistic expression without being violent, it's not the art that made them violent, it's the conditions that preceded the art. The art just gave them a way to express something about it. And that's not violence in and of itself. If somebody is immortal, no art is going to change that. And the state wants you to think that they can legislate morality, control morality from the top down, and dictate what the universal morality is. Hitler literally used an entire museum to house degenerate art. Degenerate art. So that he could have people walk through it and point at it and laugh. Ha ha ha! These people are sick. No wonder we need a holocaust. And people like Tipper Gore act just like him in that way. And maybe the Nazi book burning analogy wasn't too far off from a government who only decades before those hearings was literally working with Nazis in the terms of the Galen Org and the Bundeswehr. Helping them escape post-war Germany. Maybe the reason they need to control art is because they're not too different from Nazi Germany at all. And maybe these people don't deserve your explanation of Christian piety. Twisted Sister does a, uh, an annual show for A Twisted Christmas. It's a totally family-friendly uh, program that they do uh, live where they don't allow drinking or drugs and where it's an environment where you know kids and families can just get together and enjoy some Christmas carols done in a non-boring and bland and sanitized way with some interesting instrumentation and it's fucking cool and I listen to that album every fucking year because of that and he regularly goes uh, like on the record as saying he's a Christian and that's the reason he has this show so that he can express like Christian songs but through the perspective of a modern instrumentation because, you know, God's love is eternal. That is infinitely more Christian, that is infinitely more moral than anything the PMRC or Tipper Gort did at all, ever. And all of these people doing this satanic panic about how terrible, terrible, terrible this music is, they should have all been told to go fuck themselves. Instead, what they got was the truth on a silver platter, and they still regulated the people. And that's exactly what they're doing now. That's exactly what they're doing now with this canceling, with this censorship, with this banning people who think differently from social media, with this debanking people, with this central bank digital currency, with this modern-day fascism where they get to dictate everything from the top down. That's what they're doing now. They're trying to enact the same kinds of controls, but universalist. They get to top-down control your morality, and you don't get to say shit about it. So, my message to you is, yes... If you're like Dee Snyder and you are a good Christian man with a good Christian family and you want to convey that to con uh, the Senate, sure, go ahead. Not talking down to you. But what I am saying is you don't fucking have to. And these people do not deserve that explanation. 
and these people will not care about that explanation. And whatever form this sticker takes, whatever form of censorship gets pushed through, that will be pushed through regardless. Because when the state wants to censor you, they will at the point of a gun. So you need to tell those people to go fuck themselves and have a Merry Christmas anyway where you smash the fucking state.